Chef, a heck of an exclamation point for your day. I'll tell you what, deja vu is not always a good thing, but I'm looking at halftime, three to one. And if you go back in the history of the Cosmos in Tampa Bay, I don't remember a one nothing game. I mean, there were always shootouts, 5-4, 3-2. Uh, so I was not feeling good at halftime, three to one. Uh, having said that, this is, this is typical New York Cosmos Tampa Bay Rowdies and turned out to be a great night. Chef, after all these years, to, to be at home and to have a ship messing day here at Hofstra Stadium, you know, what does it feel like to be at home and have a day really dedicated to you and, and, and sort of your honor? Yeah, I, you know, I, it's not about me. It's never been about me. It was, I think it's a nice promotion and it's kind of, for me, lighthearted and fun, but I, I don't take it seriously. Anything I could do to help this team, I do. I, I think it's apropos, though, that it's against Tampa Bay because that was really the seminal moment for the 1970s New York Cosmos. Um, you've talked about it, and I never forget picking up Beckenbauer. We're averaging 25,000 people a game at Giant Stadium, and it was that Father's Day, uh, 1977, we're driving to Giant Stadium, and there's 70,000 people there, and that was the Tampa Bay Rowdies. So that Tampa Bay Rowdies always historically uh, mean a lot to us because that was the team uh, with who we really took it to the next level. And so, hey, look, I'm not going to tell you it wasn't sweet tonight. I mean, I, I was feeling angry at halftime and watching the second half unfold. Uh, that's, that's old New York Cosmos. That's good stuff. What about the day being here for you, your first professional game in the stadium? What about that? Yeah, that's, you know, this crowd is super now. I, I know we want to see more. I know it's building, but I played my first year here to 1,500 people, 1,200 people. Uh, you know, we had a general manager, Clive Toy, and, and we're at practice one day, and, and, and a father comes up with 10 kids, and he said, I want to buy 11 tickets for the game. What time does it start? And Clive said, what time do you want the game to start? So, <laughs> you know, we had a, we had a, a tough hill to climb. I, I think these New York Cosmos are starting with a good little solid fan base. So, pretty cool to be here tonight. Chef, uh, two questions. Number one, rule changes over the years, 35-yard offside, shootouts, uh, pass back to the keeper, picking the ball up. When you look back to the game then versus the game now, how would it have been for you as the keeper? Yeah, well, good question. First of all, 35-yard offside, I don't think was ever given enough time to see whether it worked or not. It's 10, ten years. Yeah, but players adjusted to it. You know, the goal was to increase scoring. That didn't affect really the goalkeepers. The two most important changes you alluded to for goalkeepers were the shootout instead of penalty kicks and playing it back to your hands instead of your feet. So I happen to love the shootout. I still think a shootout is more game-related than a penalty kick to decide a championship, a, a Champions League, a World Cup. It's more game-related, uh, a shootout from 35 yards. So I love the shootout, and so did most, most of the players. In terms of playing the ball back, look, I was terrible with my feet. I could never survive today because it's a different game. If I played today, I'd have to be much better with my feet. But I, I was great with my hands. So in the old days, play a ball back to me, I could pick it up and throw it like a rifle and pick out a guy 60 yards away and put it on his foot on a dime with my arm. I'd have to be much better with my feet today. The second question, what was it like to be the youngest coach in the North American soccer league? He, he's the only guy that, he asked me this trivia question every year. Who's the youngest coach ever to coach? Uh, is it me? It was me. You're 28. I, 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 was, I was a player that broke curfew, so I was a coach that was no good. <laughs> I was not a good coach. Never. It's hard, hard to really say, but but we do have we do have on this New York Cosmo team some personalities. I, I watch what Marco Senna did today. That's a that's a big time play by a big time player. That that's a play. It's a moment in a game where the big stars step up, and, and, and that's a similarity, really. We always had a Pelé or a Canalia or a Beckenbauer 
who can, who can in a nanosecond win the game for you. And, and I saw that tonight uh, by Marco Sen. I also saw a team like us, the old Cosmos, we could go down three goals, we never quit. Because we know, we always knew we could stick in four. And, and that's what I saw from the guys tonight. As bad as it was after the first 45 minutes, they knew they could stick in a couple of goals. So, another similarity. Can we do one more, guys? You came out a little too far, but the second half had a couple of key stops that helped contribute to the win. Yeah, I'm a big believer in Rainish. I, I really am, and I've seen him a lot over the years, and I've seen him a lot this year. For goalkeepers, the one thing in his defense it, it, it's a transition. You have to get acclimated to new situation, new team, new back four. Reversio, Mendez, he's got things to get acclimated to. Some poor decision making early in the year, and I think tonight. But the measure of a big goalkeeper, and I think Kyle Rainish is a big goalkeeper, is the moment you make a mistake, you have to have the feeling that, you know what? I'm the best guy to be between the sticks for the New York Cosmos. And that's what he showed me in the second half. So that takes a special kind of player to overcome what, what I'm sure he would say were two tactical mistakes in the first half. He's got the, he's got the macho to get back up and say, you know what, I'm the man. And, and he showed it in the second half.